Hey guys, how are you? I'm um, a check in from Crypto Sniper. That's right. Uh, we're going to talk about BTC, the God market. Why BTC all the time? Um, this is your God market. If you've been following my Twitter profile um, and if you followed uh, other YouTubes, uh, you will know that the BTC dominance is in an upswing. Apart from being what we refer to as the God market, it is uh, the, the coin that is also gaining in relative dominance. It's been the best hold during this period for consistency. Yes, you might find one or two very small market cap coins that have had in percentage terms higher climbs, but in overall gain of market cap volume as a big bear, um, it's been the most stable and most consistently up. Um, so that is why you need to understand it. So this is a BTC led recovery, which is not a bad thing that we're seeing. Now what you're going to see here is something we go into far more detail in a program and of course uh, it's part of one of our key tools that we use within the hunt volatility funnel theory and we use it within our specific setups. So you're going to get a flyby um, uh, viewing only on this but I'm going to give you enough that will be useful to you as a trader if you don't have the means to invest in your trading. Remember you can get only so far on free views but it will be helpful and it'll be a tool. So what have I done um, in this chart. So let's give you a quick heads up um, on that. Uh, before I start penciling in and drawing, I want to show you what we've got here. So this is first of all Bitfinex exchange. I'm going to do the same for Binance. I know some of you are going to go, ah, Bitfinex has got no volume anymore. It's going to die, all of that. We need history. We need history with high volume of trade because I've taken you back. Look at the dark blue line that I've drawn for you over here this level. This is the point at which BTC first crossed the 3k uh, level. That is a key key moment. That was a breakout candle right there. Um, I'm capturing from the 3k. Why 3k? Because we almost made the 3k low in the sell off over here. So what am I doing? This is about volume, but it's about volume in a different way. Many of you understand volume histograms, how much trade occurred on the particular day. See that breakout, there was volume behind it, etc, etc. But many don't know how to use volume profile. Um, so the shortest uh, flyby, as I say, we go into much more detail and how to use it in conjunction with the key uh, setups that we have in a far greater level, but you will get a good understanding, at least in principle here. So what I'm saying is, how has Bitcoin traded the God market, the most important thing that decides if the overall crypto market will go up or not? How has it traded and where are the key levels? Of significance, a key HVF point we call it K loss. Um, so once again, in writing, um, we acronymize it so it turns into K L little O S. Key levels of significance, and volume by price is brilliant for showing you where the key levels of significance are. Most people think that key levels of significance are uniformly uh, just round numbers. For example, twenty thousand, nineteen thousand. And apart from that, they uniformly um, shared across all levels. In other words, evenly distributed or no rhyme or particular reason. And we dispute that. In fact, we say the market shows you where the levels have been uh, key and where you've had a higher volume. So while the volume histogram show you how much traded on the day, the volume by price show you how much over a time period, note the confines of the yellow area that I've defined from the first time we went above 3k to today, shows you how much volume of Bitcoin occurred at a particular price level, these histograms. So you can see actually the 20,000 sale, not many people got out at the 20,000 point and not so many were actually getting in. You can see relatively how this was thin edge of a wedge in terms of volume. The bulk of the trading and getting engaged was up here. Then those that were making money sat on it. They didn't sell and those that wanted in couldn't really buy and that's why there was a bid up blow off moment in there literally from that point on. You'll see some are dark and some are light. This is your 70% level. You can set that percentage. You can adjust it in the settings. You go to settings on trading view. We've got an amazing course that will show you once you're on board how best to use Sniper uh, trading view um, and how you can adjust those things. But the general acceptance is 70% is a good number. So the dark ones show 70% of that volume from above 30k happened 
in and around this gray line that I've drawn. Remember this gray line, 4280, tapping on the door up to the level uh, here around 12,000. That was your 70% range. Everything else was minutia. You've got a little bit above and a little bit below, usually evenly distributed. So actually 15% in quite a small range here, and then a massive range, very thinly distributed there. So you get the 70% in the middle. So it shows you the tails of 15% as well. Everyone getting that? Tails as in vertical tail and, and lower tail, as opposed to normal bell curve with left and right tails. Okay, everyone understanding? Okay, so moving on, um, what does this uh, effectively show us? This shows us, and this is something we exploit in HVF method. Uh, we do it, all, and it applies to many, many uh, markets. So the Hunt Volatility Funnel approach utilizes volume by price very powerfully and it gives us a lot of additional clues. Volume is a rare indicator that brings its own data. It's not reprocessed garbage maths formula on different price points that lag and never tell you something early. Volume precedes a move often and uh, that is powerful and volume by price also will show you what are key levels. So what have I done over here? I've drawn a gray line here after this massive histogram. You might just see it and there is actually one here and the reason you can't see it is because it's luminous green and that's because price is right there now. So there are two gray lines, one where the luminous green line is and the one that you can probably just about see over there. What am I highlighting? I'm highlighting that there was actually high histograms, Manhattans on their side uh, here and there were very high histograms here. A lot of trade took place. And what does that mean? Well, Part of the reason why um, we expect and, uh, the move to have been bullish when it broke out is we have a concept called voids and vacuums. Voids and vacuums are where the gaps in between the high participation levels are very lightly traded, but you make the same profit when you run on that autobahn covering kilometers after kilometers at 300 kilometers per hour as you do when you're towing a wagon hand and foot through a muddy field. Um, some are just more difficult to do than others. So what this means is the fast, easy gains are in the voids and vacuum. That's a hunt volatility funnel phrase. I call it V and V um, that occur in between where um, the market participation was not so high. That means you moved quickly through this on the way up and you moved quickly through it on the way down. Not a great deal of relative volume was accumulated at those price points compared to where we were here. There's your twin towers on the side and your gaps in the middle um, on those Manhattans. They're on their side. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, you may recall, whilst others were calling this whole structure compound fulcrum, which it wasn't, go study the South African, another South African in technical analysis, Jeremy Duplessy, on compound fulcrums, and that's never qualified as one. And of course, it's a reversal pattern, which this wasn't. It was a continuation pattern, which is why you broke down and you broke quickly. Remember, voids and vacuums, that was the... Uh, nice air pocket that you sung through that was quick uh, and easy money till you got into the thicker traffic where it became more of a battle now what i want you to observe in all of this is if you look at those gray line and the luminous green line um, you'll note how perfectly it kind of necklines the basing out over here in fact, if I clear that, your, once you broke with that histogram and you got into the low volume uh, supported areas, what happened? You started to cover ground quickly. Yep, and momentum feeds on more momentum and you get a higher histogram. And in fact, we've gone real, real quick drifting up, but that was the best part. Why? It had the lowest histograms over here. It's starting to thicken up because you can see we had a little bit of tip tap toe on the price action of Bitcoin here, you built up bigger volume by price histograms. So we've gone from fast breaking from that key level, which is both the technical level, as you can see, as I've already shown, kind of rounded bottom there, and your volume by price uh, drops away quite steeply, you know, by 50%, and then even further right down to the lowness there, you get your fast move. Where was your, the end of the really low histograms up top here? draw it across, that was your fast move, right there. 
the drop down in volume and there you get your breakout candle boom now it started to get into slightly heavier traffic but still okay and it's built up like that now the key point about this is during this period we had six months of sheer boredom and we kept saying it's short. We were probably the only person in Shortville in Bitcoin. Everyone else calling bottoms and compound fulcrums, etc., etc. No, it wasn't. It was continuation to the downside. And during that period where there was this lots of volume building up, you are stacking huge histograms, key levels of significance for future when you revisit guess what that moment is now potentially coming and here we are now today now i want to just show you how more obvious this is once we've done since we traded above 3k which captures the lows post the bull market highs you could also just for your amusement's sake you can collect data over different periods so what i'm going to do is i'm going to close that volume by price and I'm going to run it. Let's just capture what's happened in the more recent history post the bull market high. Does it change anything? Does it change anything? And guess what? No, it doesn't. It just shows in a more extreme manner, if anything, the nature of and the dominance of this period that we had that was so vast across 2018 and broke so many hearts massive stacking up one of the reasons why it justified our uh, access level on a low slung uh, flat bottomed inverted hvf which is why we continued to buy a short buy a short but it was like going on and on and not breaking had a couple of false pumps on a bitfinex issue etc etc lots of people trying to run the shorts out of town um, and what you ended up having is this very low slung volume through the structure all the way down through there that was being built up that eventually relented, eventually relented and it relented into the vacuum zone. Um, and as you can see, there's that vacuum zone like that and like that. And that is voids and vacuums, HVF method concept. And you fall through it really quickly and you make big money, super fast without having to knock down loads of walls. Um, who'd rather run in your Porsche turbo down uh, in the fast lane at 300 kilometers per hour or who'd like to knock down wall after wall? And you're getting to the point where you're now going to need to knock down wall out of wall. The point of doing technical analysis to look retrospectively to get information and data for that which it will tell you going forwards. We're not just historians. That is, doesn't help you with the here and now. So the reasons behind going over all of this is to bring you to the here and now and what may happen next on balance of probabilities uh, in terms of where we are now with crypto. So what you, what you recognize is we move quickly and fast through void and vacuum places which are not highly supported with volume by price data. Um, however, you will have a much bigger skirmish and note how there was still highish volume down here even on um, since we traded here so you notice that all that extra data that made this higher when I had that point over here showed that there was a lot of volume participation here in other words when we came to the downside you ran into support zones here we always thought could you break lower or will you overwhelm it or are you going to base out? We knew this was going to be an inflection point of some port. Eventually, technically, the market confirmed it. Because we're co uh, continuation bias, we watched it happen. We didn't get much of the upside generally. We've taken very small tactical trades, largely not benefiting a great deal from that move. Because we're continuation bias and we were saying we were ready for the other side. Um, and it took a while before it happened. And I got busy with other markets and we missed the goddamn trade. It happens. Guess what? You're always, um, you're always up to something. And it was taking a while to manifest. Now we know where we are going. So here we are now running running into one of the most highly participated in many people go into profit or into loss at this level people always remember the price in which they personally engaged a market a high volume of people engaged this market both on the bull side as i've already shown you when that was over there capturing in there um, on the way up 
and on this bear side trying to buy the bottom and now sitting in red or if they weren't flushed out ready to buy back in now to come back to where they are today so that is the concept of volume by price and that was a key pattern that was very very dominant that ran literally from the middle of 18 and you got the 14th of november we did a theory weekend on the 11th we called ethereum um, bitcoin all to the downside shorts coming soon and because we'd got super low volatility here and there was a 60 plus risk reward trade made on Ethereum for those that cared to watch that free live stream that YouTube is still out there. Also, the YouTube is out there about Bitcoin dominance if you want to go watch that as well, which has continued to move up. So I haven't got time to revisit that. So you might say, yeah, 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 but this is Bitfinex now and they, they, they now just a curiosity um, in terms of volume today. Well, they had decent volume back in, then, the history is relevant. Also, the numbers of the, the, the premiums, that's got a little bit funky on that. Well, before I leave Bitfinex and do the same on Binance, which is uh, accepted to be a uh, high volume for the current period, but was not dominant as an exchange until October of about 17, um, we, where we would have lost some of this early history, uh, I'm going to drop down the time frame. So what's happening right now in the lower time frames? Well, you're getting upside structure and once again, you're getting validation of how we get our volume by profile and you can see our axis was endorsed by a nice long histogram and the expectation is on Bitfinex you're going to run 6,400 just below 6,400 on another move upside. But this could be the beginning of an end because it's going to run into a much bigger participated zone now as I've already illustrated on the bigger time frames. So that's the game. A little bit more but then potentially we're going to run into big trouble however will it eventually potentially overcome this level absolutely but not without a big period of market engagement why because the market's shown us that previously on the way up and on the way down as you saw by my volume by price analysis that high engagement was required people will say yeah these are important levels most of them don't understand how much and why they're important and how do you quantify that? How do you get data on that? Welcome to um, Binance. Similar against Tether, by the way. I think that's their most popular pair. We had a little primer. You'll learn how we spot for those as well. Um, let's see the bigger time frame first on this chart. So here we go. Exact same. This one, I've just done the bull market, the bear market, sorry, from the high. Why? Binance wasn't around long enough and the volume you're getting in that early period if you look at it here was not sufficient in other words they do not contribute to the picture in a meaningful way here is where you see Binance's volume to me they're the Google out of the blue that must be very very control structure friendly but that's you know a conspiracy for another day um, funds are safe all that good stuff um, but there you go your volume climbing up into the histogram and now you start to have real histogram volume note also that the breakout on the Binance side was a lot bigger than on um, the Bitfinex side uh, in terms of their volume etc over there so let's lose the bull market on the way up I think you can accept um, that uh, Bitfinex captured that earlier part of the history more reliably with more significant volume what do we have here well I'm going to squeeze it a little bit we don't want too much um, of the histograms getting in the way but you can see the volume participation in Binance has been very very high note how you got uh, a real void period just before the crack and smash down on one of the most significant exchanges and then you got our break down 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 she came and there was the big big volume tree and then you started to get equally high volume coming in there green and then it drifted down and then it returned with that breakout interesting on the histogram level do we get a different picture on the volume by price no 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 the same the same the same two separate exchanges one that was very significant um, particularly through the key areas one that is now more so significant and what are you getting the same message the same message says and the gray lines are both visible in this instance the luminous line is a bit below here is your voids and vacuums your hvf method voids and vacuums easy catch quick run big profits not so not so many walls to knock down 
you're in your Porsche Turbo, down the Autobahn, that is your quick and easy. Gray line to gray line can be traded on volume. Even without the HVF setup, you can still do well understanding this conceptually. There was, again, proven a high amount of histogram volume. In fact, if you look at your 70% here, your 70% is all along the lows. That's because of the insufficient uh, volume trading at the higher points. The rest in Binance from that orange level line that I've drawn, 3176, which was the Binance low there, all the way through to just above here, 70% of everything. You're at just 7,000. 3,000 to 7,000 was 70% of all volume. This was on fumes. That 20 grand. That 30% is everything from 7K all the way to 20, uh, 20K. You were on fumes there. And by the way, you dropped extremely strongly there. I would argue you could have just in that, but you won't have more than five to 10% from here. 12 to 20, you were lucky if you had five to 10% of that volume on the way down. On the way down, remember I'm capturing the bear market. So we're capturing the volume from this side. Binance was not reliably significant for me to go back and capture the 3000 from the time before for reasons already explained. But what you can see is since all the volume, Binance was building its dominance here, the volume and the breakdown here was clearly there. And what's happening now, that green level is there and we have a target on a short time frame for it. So the trigger for our short, we're entering into what we refer HVF key levels of significant zones again on our setup and you are going to run into heavier weather. Also, impulsive and strong when you broke the gray line, again, the technical level almost perfectly capturing there's your big volume histogram. There's your other big volume. Here is the void. That is your void. Your voids and vacuums, HVF method style. Um, and that's why you made quick progress. And then you had a little bit of a medium high. And so the progress went a little bit slower since then. And now you're getting into heavy traffic. That is why many commentators instinctively are saying, but they don't have the methodology, the mechanisms, or the full understanding to explain to you why the six 1,400. That 6,000, let's clear the face. It's getting nice and messy here. I'm going to turn this into um, um, logarithmic. It is going to distort the bars, but I think it will help get us the focus on the bottom third. It's a bit small what I've got in front of me uh, now to explain perfectly. So here we go. Let's stretch that out and let's focus where we are. Let's focus where we are. So here you all are on your Binance. Note the volume gets fatter because this is a percentage price point, uh, not a regular price point scale. So the final little target that we have up here brings you to the beginning of what we call a major key level of significance that was held as support on the pink line for the better part of most of the second half of the year and you have cumulative volume that is very, very high. Remember, that's as important as uh, this. It's just thinner because of the log scale. But the lengths are second and third of all lengths compared to that sole one, which is marginally higher. And they are back to back. They are covering a thick, thick zone. So charge in if you like at Bitcoin. But my view is there will be a little bit more to have and you will get into something, but at some point there will be a proper skirmish and some degree of uh, resistance. Why? People get out at the point that they got in. If they were short or if they're long, people remember it. It's endorsed as a key participation level. There could be a lot to change hands. That said, when it fails, when this key level that will be serving as a resistance zone eventually fails, you will have a softer area to run into. So my suspicion is at first we may get knockbacks, then we may get a nice wind up pattern if we are bullish. Uh, maybe if we're lucky, we'll get a nice volatility squeeze and then you'll wind up to break with momentum and then relapse down now as support what was once resistance. This is typical price behavior conduct. If the bear was to resume and 
it's it's never a hundred percent gone even though it's maybe only a five percenter this would could turn into a double top with a neckline and you would do something it's changed the color and let's clear the face a bear scenario would be a major double top an attempt again come down a week maybe a squeeze for the downside and break that and a cycle back for a deeper wind up for maybe bullishness later or a revisit of the lows even possible do i think that's highly probable mm, not really but i won't say that this upside has had the momentum of that downside yet it has taken back that territory but this period has been somewhat grinding and is now coming into a point of real resistance so it's kind of like that you've been working through the rural lands and slowly overcoming your enemy and now you're coming to some major towns where the entire garrison's waiting for you you aren't gonna storm right through if you're already exhaustively working your way through just the, the sparsely uh, rural areas so be careful there will be some degree of reaction as we get into the zone you can see how those price levels are different um, for they are different and they start from that 6.2 on Binance. And they run to our stop loss level of 6.8. So on Binance, your 6.200. And we had this as the flaws. It were the exact numbers when we were talking about it on the way down. We had the hard floor. You may remember if those that have been following the of 6K and soft floor at 6.2. And we had hard ceiling at 7K. And we had soft ceiling at 6.8. And that is exactly what you've come back to again there she goes so prepare for price behavior that deals in such a manner i think a winding up on a bigger time frame is going to be necessary to eventually break this with momentum so the call is it in balance of probabilities will eventually be broken with momentum however that which is needed does not in this have the current momentum to deal with it in a first up event so you will go up you will skirmish you will come down some form of rewinding up process will be required to eventually lead to a high momentum break that will then have a relapse and see support on the 6.8 uh, level. That is the market sniper, the crypto snipers take. That is introducing you to some concepts of volume by price. What I've done here in 20 minutes, um, you get in far greater detail in a program. If you really want to master something, get good at it. Um, but if it's not for you and this was just useful, carry on doing what you're doing. Um, be careful out there. It's an opinion. And I can be wrong like many things, um, but what has typically been shown to be significant before often is again uh, significant. Okay, uh, and the main concept is understanding Bitcoin is permissioning the recovery for the rest. You need to understand the God market leads, the main uh, coin leads. There will be the odd one hype merchant shooting star. Good luck if you think you can pick that needle out of that haystack. Um, you need liquidity. You need to be able to get in and out. Know what your God market is doing and you can do exceedingly well. And you can play the other top 10 coins. There will be an old season where they consistently outperform in percentages again at some point. Um, we've been away from the platform coins a large degree, closer to the Litecoins, the ABCs, Bitcoin. Um, but uh, we've had Ethereum rally the, recently, so eventually it will be dragged along as well if Bitcoin keeps going up. And there is a place at which at some point it will be uh, a sell again, and that's not necessarily that far away. I think a little bit more upside. Oh, the last thing I didn't do as I'm winding down here is I didn't show you the shorter time frame. So if we have a quick look at the shorter time frame, where is it on Binance looking at? 6,083, and that was your short level at 6,131. Confluences of key levels, I'll do this just with my finger now, um, occurring there. Um, if we're lucky, we get this to finish, maybe a little dip back and you go through and then I would expect some degree of resting. It might attempt to go a little higher and skirmish a little higher, but at some point we'll have our pullback that I've referred. Okay, um, if you want to find out more about how we do this and these kind of um, presentations that we do more regularly in Loom format inside our community, you're welcome to uh, go to themarketsniper.com. Otherwise, bye for now, guys, and uh, trade small, trade safe. Make sure you have method, otherwise the emotions and the psychology will take over and spoil it for you. Bye for now.